Welcome to Pure Mind Magic, the show to evolve your mind. Our mind is the most powerful thing we have, but no one teaches us how to use it. When we find out how, we're ready to create magic in life and in business. Learn real mindset secrets from brilliant minds around the world to change your mindset and income level forever. With every decision you make, you create your future. What is your next move? Now, welcome your host. Host, international magician, speaker, and podcast performance consultant, Jennifer S. Royal. This is Jennifer, and welcome back to Pure Mind Magic. Today, my guest on the show is from New York. He is a self made singer and songwriter and just released his first public single called No Goodbyes. His video on YouTube has already more than 1 million views and his music is really stunning and gives you goosebumps while listening. Today we will talk about the story how this song became a hit by accident, how he produced the music video and overall how he's dealing with creativity, being stuck and being in a productive daily routine to keep you motivated and come up with new ideas that really touch other people's lives. He has more than 5,000 comments on this music video on YouTube already and talks a little bit about what it means to become really visible to the world outside. So stay tuned for an interesting interview and here is for you Norman Alexander. Hi, Norman. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Good. How are you today? I'm doing well, you know. Awesome. <laughs> so you are still in New York, I guess? Yes, I am in New York. I'm, I'm very close to the airport. You're going to be hearing that uh, a lot. <laughs> But, you know, yes, I'm in New York. Great. So you still have flights coming in and out despite COVID. Yeah. Yes, despite COVID. Interesting. So Norman, today is going to be a very creative and I would also say emotional episode talking about your career as a self-made singer and songwriter and the creator of the stunning single No Goodbyes. And I have seen the music video you made about it. And I mean, watching this really gives you goosebumps. And I will link this, of course, below this episode. But let's dive deep a little bit. And Norman, you can say this in your own words best. What is the song all about and what drove you to write this in the first place? Yes. Um... The song, No Goodbyes, it came from a really dark place. I was in the possibly the worst place of my life at the time when I wrote that. But what it's about is, it's about taking grief, taking loss, and turn it, you know, turn it into a beautiful thing. Um, we've said goodbyes to a lot. We said goodbye to a lot of people, you know, this year, last year, I just had a candlelight for my grandmother last night, you know? So, because she passed away last week. So that's what No Goodbyes is about. I mean, when I think about these people that I've lost in my life and, you know, and when I think about people out there who I've lost, who are hurting right now, you know, I think No Goodbyes is the, is the best thing for them. You know, it's, it's the way how we celebrate who we've lost, you know, instead of mourning them. We celebrate them, celebrate the things that they've done, the, the experience that they've had, the moments that they've given us. I think um, that's what got me through losing my sister and my brother. I lost my sister four years ago, my brother two years ago, and now my grandma last week. Wow, I'm really sorry, Norman, about all your losses. And I mean, it is really awesome what you're doing there and being able to making this transition and taking all these emotions and like keeping all those important people to you alive in your music, I would say. Yeah, um, I think it's, imp I think it's an important to do that because, you know, there's a lot of darkness. There's a lot of bad things in the world. There's a lot of good things too, right? Um, what's beautiful about it is what you can take 
you know, what you can take the darkness and, and create with it. You know, I think that's that's what I realized um, when my when my sister passed away. In that moment, I never I didn't get the chance to mourn her death. The same thing with my brother because I had to make sure my mom was okay, and I had to make sure my sister's son was okay. You know, um, my nephew, and so I took him in and been basically raising him since, right? And so I never got a chance to deal with that, and it wasn't until Everybody took a halt in 2020 when everything slowed down and I wasn't on go anymore. You know, I had to stop and think and I realized that I, I wasn't okay. You know, I had, um, I had all these equipments around me, my guitars, my drums, and I wasn't making any music. And I realized that it's because I wasn't, I wasn't okay. And when I started to look inward a little bit. I realized what was what was in there that was kind of blocking me from from um, keep being creative and keep working how I work and process how I process. And so I had to write it down. I had to lock myself in this room and write it down. And this beautiful song came out of it. Yes, and you can hear that because there's all this emotion in, and I think it's like in a movie. So some movies really catch you and touch you on a deep level, and your song does the same. And you can feel that from the creator, you, all this inform this information or this emotion is captured in the song. And I think it's different than someone just writing down and thinking about writing any kind of song. So it won't reach this deep level that you are doing mm. the, the, you know another thing with that is on paper looking at it right i i realized that i i didn't want people to listen to this song and and feel sad you know it's sad circumstances and it's tough and it's sad, it's, it's it's tough that we have to go through this right and we're going to go through it again and this is not the last time so instead of making another sad song to make people feel sad that, you know, the ones that they love, it's not here. I wanted to put something in the world that says, hey, you're not here. But I, but I remember this time and I remember that time. And, you know, and so it was important for me to get the right producer on the beat on the song to help me bring that to life. I didn't want another, you know, another piano melancholy song. I wanted something that made you want to move, but at the same time while you're moving, you're thinking about, you know, these things. So you're happy. You're happy about the life that they've lived. And so I think that that's what one 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 of the most important things in the writing in the creating process. You know, that's one of the most um that was one of the most key things that I was trying to, you know, put into the song. Yes, I understand. And I think you did this perfectly. And it's really like that you transformed the darkness or brought light into the darkness. And I think at the moment you could say that the, the whole world is kind of a dark place because there's so much negative energy and so much darkness and so much loss. I think people are not only losing other people, but they are also losing their existence, their houses, their businesses, yeah. their jobs, everything. So there's a lot of this heaviness. And yeah. I mean, it's your decision how you deal with it. And Norman, what can you say from your experience? How were you able? I mean, this feels like a truckload on your shoulders, losing all those people that are so close to you. So how were you able to stand up instead of falling apart? Well, it is important to feel, to feel. And, you know, I think it's important to feel and uh, acknowledge what you're feeling, right? I think that's important. But as as a creative, as somebody who just has to stay creative, you know, to have a peace of mind, my outlets are usually, you know, I have 10 journals. I, I have to write down everything just so like it's out of here. Because if I keep things inside of my head, then, you know, um, I'm going to explode. So one of the the things, I, I, I was listening to something that... Uh, Diana Ross, I believe. Um, she recorded a long time ago. And it was that when you create a positive thought, a negative thought is created as well. 
And that's very powerful. So as I was in this dark place, I, I always kept thinking, there's a brighter road ahead. There's a brighter place ahead, you know? So every negative thought I was having, I made sure there was a, a positive thought to, you know, to balance that out. Because I knew where I wanted to be. I knew I didn't want to be here. I knew I didn't want to be in, um, you know, in the, in the depression. You know, I knew I didn't want that. And that, so I kept looking forward, kept telling myself that there is better, kept doing things to enforce that, you know, manifesting, basically. Very clever strategy, yes. So, Norman, maybe do you have a tip when someone listening is in a similar place at the moment where you have been, what they can do? So you mentioned journaling and keeping a positive mindset, but anything else you would give as an advice to go through a dark phase in your life? Um, it might, I, I would say that, uh, sometimes it feels like it's better if you close yourself off, you know, lock yourself off from the world. But in my opinion, I don't think that it is. I think you should talk to somebody, you know, a friend, you know, um, I have a friend that talks to strangers sometimes that I don't know how, how he does it <laughs> and it helps him. But talk to someone, you know, it's important that somebody else knows what's going on inside of here because uh, I'm someone who never did that. It wasn't until this year that I started doing that, you know someone who didn't judge me at all, someone who wasn't just listening to me just to answer what I'm saying or to try and fix what, what it is that was bothering me. There's somebody that just listens. It's important to have that person. That's, you know, that's, that's the, one of the main things that I could um, recommend. Yes, that makes sense. So in other words, you would say that it is not a good idea to trap all your emotions inside yourself. So you have to find a way to release them, right? It's 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 not a good idea. <laughs> it is not a good idea. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't know how much time we have here, but you know, there's a lot to say about the matter. My um you know, a lot of people in my family are like that. You know, and as they grow older, it, it eats them up. They don't know how to process. They don't know how to process things. They don't know how to process any of, you know, all of those things. Because the time to, the best time to deal with, um, in my opinion, the best time to deal with things that you've gone through is like, in not in the moment, but, you know, around <laughs> that time. You know what I mean? And um, when you leave it for years, leave it for years, and then you kind of have to go back and dig it up. It's you know it's a harder it's a harder fight. You know I've had a little bit of that because that you know that's what I was taught. I was taught to bottle. I was taught to bottle. But um, thank goodness I was always a creative kid. So while I was bottling, I was also getting it out in other ways. You know. I was getting it out in 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 other ways. So yeah, it's definitely not. A good thing to bottle up emotions it's not yes I, I agree with you and Norman I have another very important question for you so I think it takes a lot of courage to make yourself that kind of vulnerable or visible and sharing your inside thoughts and emotions with the rest of the world and I think many business owners or people who are thinking about starting the path of entrepreneurship are dealing with this issue because they have to become visible to the outside world with what they are doing, whatever it is, whether it's creative or in another field. So how do you deal with this? I mean, your song has, I think, half a million views or more now on YouTube. Well, it, has, it has a million. A million. Oh, wow. Congratulations on that. Awesome. A million so, and, and some. Awesome. So over a million have seen everything from your most inner feeling. So how do you cope with that? 
So first, uh, to the entrepreneurs are, are people who, who are out there who have ideas but are afraid to um, put them out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, quick story on no goodbyes. I was, my um, label reached out to me and they said, you know, um, we would, uh, you'd really like if you could do you know, a song for so many who, who, you know, who have lost. And I thought about it and I was like, okay, I could do that. You know, this was, so a month before that I had written no goodbyes because I was going through, you know, the things that I was going through. I didn't want to, it wasn't a song for the world. Right? It wasn't a song for the world yet. It was supposed to be, but I wasn't ready to share it. Right? And just because, like you said, it is a vulnerable place. It is. You're kind of inviting people, you know, you're inviting the world into, you know, all the hurt, all the pain, your whole life, essentially. Right? And so um, I said, yeah, sure, I could write a song, um, you know. And so I wrote one. And my label manager, he said, uh, so I, could you send it out to me? And so I sent it out to him. And he said, I really like it. No goodbyes. And in my head, I was like, what? What happened? So I went back in my email. It turns out I sent him the wrong song. <laughs> it wasn't a song <laughs> that I was supposed to send him and he loved it instantly and you know he told me you know I think this is something that is really going to um uh really going to help a lot of people it it, it didn't it didn't become it wasn't about corona anymore it wasn't about the fact that people were losing people to corona it was just something bigger than that you know it was something bigger than that it was just for loss to take that to take that darkness and you know take that unfortunate thing of losing family you know and, and celebrate them so what i'm saying is i didn't want to share that with the world but then i did accidentally and now there's over five thousand or so comments on youtube that i get to read all these people's lives that I've, you know, impacted, like they feel comfortable enough to share their story with me. And at first I didn't, um, I, at first it was just like tough because it got, it got sad through it. It got sad through it, but I'm the type of person that I want to see what people are saying. So I took the time out. I think I took like a day, me and a friend of mine, we were just going through comments. We were reading them like, wow, you know, somebody even, um, talked about their cat cat being a long like a like just a long life friend and the cat died <laughs> you know and i just i just thought um that was just cool that i could do that for people and yes. so whatever your ideas are whatever your ideas are those small that it might seem to you inside your head you won't know how big it could be until you release it into this lovely universe this amazing universe you, you have to. Yes, Norman, and you are the living proof so that with your transformational work, you help to transform other people's lives and also gave them new hope and new inspiration. And uh, yeah, I think this is really awesome. Thank you. So I'm curious a little bit about your music video because this is what I have seen first from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really into filmmaking and videos and visual storytelling. And I mean, you know, every film and video audio is half the part of the whole film or video, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So mm -hmm. how did this idea come up with the music video? So how much was from you or did you had another producer? How was the whole process for you? And then also being in front of the camera for the music video? Um. I was behind the camera a lot in terms of, not in terms of, uh, 
you know, sh- uh, filming, mm-hmm. but um, we were on a mountaintop. We were on a mountaintop, so it was very rocky, and so I had to follow the camera guy just so he didn't fall. <laughs> you know, just so he didn't fall off the mountain um, as he was shooting the dancer and stuff like that. So I was running around making sure of that. So when you don't see me on camera, that's what I <laughs> that's what I would be okay. doing. Okay. Um, but to the point of the uh, to the, to the video. Um, me personally, I wanted it to be because when I thought about the song and what it could be for the world, right? When I thought about the song and what it could be for the world, then I said to myself that the focus can't be on me in the video. You know, it wasn't about chains. It wasn't about jewelry. It wasn't about anything like that. It was strictly, you know, in memoriam of, you know, all who lost. And so I wanted that to be captured properly in the video. Now, as far as the directing of the video, the mind, you know, all our minds came together. We sat down, we talked about it, and I told them my concerns. I didn't want the focus to be me. You know, I want the focus, I want people to look at it and say, that's, that made me feel something. <laughs> you know, like, when they see me on that mountaintop, I wanted them to see themselves on the mountaintop, just, you know, and, and, and that, for me, it was kind of the end of my grieving process when it came to, you know, my sister, I would say. So my brother is still a little bit fresh and it was very unexpected, but my sister was sick for a long time. My sister was sick for a very long time. Yeah, I can't think about my sister without getting emotional. Um, But yeah, I think that was the end of the grieving process. When, as far as her, like on the last day of um, shooting, I was like, I think I finally, you know, just immortalized her memory. Doing this in, in you know in honor of her and in honor of my brother, I set out to do it, um, and it felt complete. It felt like it was done. So, so, yeah, the main thing behind the video is just I didn't want the attention. I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be about everyone, and I feel like we captured that. Yes, I would say you did that. So you took this step back and opened the room for other people and their emotions. Yes, that was very important. So Norman, would you say that it also helped you to be out there in nature with the mountains and everything? Because there are a lot of studies that the environment really influences you and also the creative art and that nature has a really high frequency and can give you new power and help you release things and ground yourself and all of that. Would you say that these factors also played a role while producing the video and also, as you mentioned, uh, like being on top or kind of getting over in form of making your siblings immortal? Um, 100%. 100 percent um instantly when i got up there and saw the the peak i was like this is it <laughs> you know when i when i saw the peak i was like this is it um i definitely felt connected as i was making my cause it, it's a hike up there but if you asked anyone i was running i was you know i felt i felt heightened you know i took my You know, I lost my brother and sister, but I, I, I gained a lot from their loss. So I'm like, from, from their passing, from them passing, I gained a lot from it. I just gained a way, new ways of looking at things. I gained a different source of energy that I can tap into when it comes to, you know, creativity. I see, I see my music in color now, you know, it's a different drive. I see that and, and, and um, being there, being there. Um, as you say, I'm walking 
as we were making our way up to the to the to, to the peak of the mountain, these are just the things that I was just like thinking about in my head. I was I was just like, man, I'm really about to do this, and you know, this is really about to be the first song that you know people really people really get to hear from. And there's so much more to come, but <laughs> this one was so this one was important. Everything else was worth putting to the side for this song. You know, but yeah, it I gained a lot from it. I felt connected out there, and you can see it in my emotions. You can see it, you know, um, on my 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 short little short little scene that I had up there. And I was when I was dancing. That was genuine emotion. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was genuine emotion. That was a big smile on my face. That was the first time ever I've ever smiled. Right when it came to the topic of my brother and sister's death. That was the first time I've ever like smiled about it. So I knew something bigger was, um, you know, assisting. Great, yes. And you mentioned the manifesting process. And I think there's a lot that went into this and bringing this to life. And also, Norman, when you look back now, just to give other people this kind of motivation and being brave enough to go and go for your dreams for your goals everything so when you look back from now could you have imagined everything that happened a video with more than a million views than 5,000 comments a professional shot music video a music label behind you and everything you're getting back from the world could you have imagined all that from just this idea and this email that went out by accident i definitely didn't i definitely didn't expect this from the um from the from me sending an accidental email a part of me wanted to be like that's not the song that's not the song that i was supposed to But I was like, you know, I was learning to let go because I was doing a lot of self-reflecting. But as far as me seeing myself um, on a label, million views, um, I, I, in the most humbling way, I see this every day. I've been seeing it since I was, you know, seven years old. I've been seeing it. I'm a daydreamer, you know. And so when I tune out, when I zone out, I'm thinking about me on stage, you know? Um, I remember one of my younger memories when I was probably like 11 years old, I had a, I just had a vision of me and like Adam Levine on stage. It was just, you know, just on stage, <laughs> singing. <laughs> and um, so I knew, but It was just a matter of when. I didn't expect it to come in that time from this song, you know? But, yeah, things happen when you, you know, when it's what you want and you work at it, you're consistent. And more positive, less negative thoughts. You know, negative thoughts are always going to be there. But try to focus more on the positive ones. And you'll, you'll usually get where you want to be. You know, you probably fall a little short sometimes. That means you just need to think a little bit more positive, you know? <laughs> yes. So I would say you are a master of visualization, how you describe it. And what would you say, Norman, about the importance of letting go and having this detachment because I know a lot of people they have a specific goal in mind and then they only see this one way that takes them there and they are so focused they don't notice any other opportunities or something because they just have this in mind so what role does the letting go surrender all of that play okay I like that um here Here's what I think. Letting go is where the, where you allow true creativity to take, to take over. You know? Um, when you are when you are um, when you don't do that and you just have a, one specific way or just one way how
you want things to work out and you, you know, you kind of um, pressure yourself with that thought or, you know, that thing or whatever, then you're forcing it. You're forcing it. And I, I, I used to force creation. I used to force music, you know, but then there's no fun in that. That becomes a chore, you know. But I mean, I like I like letting go because it, it it when you let go, literally, I feel I feel like it literally opens you up more to find the the answers that you're looking for. You know, somebody asked me the other day, "What's my favorite part of creating music?" And my favorite part is hitting those roadblocks, hitting those walls where I feel like. I can't figure this out, you know? And then it's usually when I get to those areas, I'm like, I'm not gonna fuss about it. Let go, I'm gonna let go. And when I do, what I find is, my brain works now by itself without me forcing it. My mind, you know, my creativity works now by itself without me actively trying to find a solution, you know? And so, I feel like letting go is something that you have to have in your in your in your tool belt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in your in your arsenal. Letting go is, is just as good as um, being consistent and you know manifesting and letting go is just as important as those things are. You have to let go sometimes. Yes. In order for, for bigger things to happen, you know? Absolutely true. And I really love your saying that true creativity takes over. So this is perfect, I think. And yeah, this is what happens when you open up and let go. So the next question for you, Norman, is the art of music, I think, is really special. I mean, there are a lot of art forms out there. And before COVID, I did a lot of magic shows. And obviously, this died as well now. So I had to transform the magic in another way now more into the, the filming business. But yes. that's all right. Just I think music is a very special art form. I mean, you have writing, you have films, you have painting, all of that. But I would say that music is really emotional so what would you say what makes the the art form music so special and different from all other art forms out there you know my background is cooking singing dancing drawing from the Caribbean, right? And so you're almost thrown into creativity, right? It's what we say as just using using um using uh your hand to make fashion. Like we're we're just we have to be creative. You know? We have to it's one of our resources. We have to be. So when You asked me why do I think you know music is more you know more special? Did you say? Yes. More special. I I don't think that it's more special than dancing because I look at a dancer sometimes. I don't know if you've seen the dancer that did my uh, did a uh, a piece to my my song to No Goodbyes. When I look at dancers, I'm just blown away I feel like sometimes when I watch like a, a good dancer a great dancer and it's like perfect I'm like there is no greater form of expressing you know and I love I love music it's the greatest form of expressing for me because I don't feel like I communicate best in any other way besides my besides cooking right I don't feel like I express in, to the level I don't think anything else is as therapeutic to me. And, you know, in music, it's been there for me before I even, you know, before I was even aware of it. And so that's why it's special to me. But I wouldn't necessarily say that it's, that it's you know, a better art form than, you know, I'm amazed by magic. 
like I'm that person who will never grow up when it comes to magic. Like I'll, I'll always identify magic as magic. I don't know. What, I don't identify as a, identify it as a trick. I love magic. Show me a card trick. Oh my God, you're the greatest. <laughs> I want David Blaine to do a, ma- a, a you know, a magic uh, trick for me. Just, just one, anything, you know. David Copperfield, any anybody, <laughs> Chris Angel, <laughs> anybody, and I and I believe it because I love it. You know, I love um, going to Broadway shows and watching plays and stuff like that. I get I'm, I'm in awe when I watch these things or listen to these things, or see a dancer or see a painter paint. Like I'm in awe. So I wouldn't say it's more special than the other. I think it's more more special to me than the other because that's my way of expressing, and I can't. I can't express it any other way. I can't even talk to you how I could sing to you. You know, I sing what I'm feeling to you or write the music. You know? Yes, I understand you. And I I think you are uh, right, Roman, with that. So that every art form is kind of special. And I just think that music breaks like all barriers. You know, you don't even have to understand the language of the singer you can yeah. feel something. And I also think maybe we can put it this way that the art form of music enhances every other art form because without exactly. music, there would be no dance and magic without music would also be almost nothing. Then you would have the speech, uh, what is something else, but the same for a movie. So a movie without music would be not that emotional and when you is, go into a room with a lot of paintings and you have music in the background it gives you a different enhances. feeling so i would say like that maybe that music enhances I every agree. art form i agree it does enhance it it does i'll agree to that <laughs> perfect so we're on the on the same wavelength on the same right page, yeah. i agree <laughs> that. so uh with with magic and music so this is really good so the same frequency And uh, I have another question for you prepared here, Norman. So when we talk about creativity and ideas, you obviously never know when inspiration hits you, when you have this light bulb moment, this big idea. And then, as you said, you have to bring it to paper out into the world. But how do you stay productive the whole day as musician, as songwriter? I think this is interesting for a lot of people because I know many people are dealing with procrastination and especially in these times of COVID stuck at home in home office. So it's really tough to stay focused and productive without being able to go out into the world as before. So what can you say? How is it possible to still be productive the whole day? Well, I can say is again I read this this other uh, this um this quote it said that um I read it uh probably like a few months ago and it says that um your surroundings um basically reflect what's the you know the what's your state of mind and just how your brain Like, you know, what's inside your mind. So if you're like, you're cluttered, if your space is cluttered and there is going to be cluttered as well. So I think first you have to make sure the environment around you is, is an insp- ins- ins- inspirational one. Like, you know, it's a, it breeds creativity, your environment, right? Um, around me, I have drums. I have uh, my keyboard. I have an easel behind me right there. You know, you know, I'm not the best painter, but paint and the colors, it stimulates, right? Um, I always have tea, you know, from tea forte. I always, I always have tea and there's, you know, my, there's always something happening. There's always something happening in the world. The world doesn't stop. Half the time we are in our heads. If we don't get out of there, we won't become inspired. We have to sometimes as well leave But I've realized this. I used to stay in four walls and just create music, and then I hit a wall, you know, what we call writer's block. But I've now, I don't believe in writer's block anymore. I don't believe in, like, a, like you know, not having any more ideas. 
I just think you have to change your surrounding. You, you literally just have to take walks. You literally just have to go places, right? You know, just, just go. Just go somewhere. Change what you see. Change what you feel, you know? And just in terms of people who procrast, you know, ones with procrasti- um, who procrastinate, just put an idea out there. Stop thinking every idea has to be the best idea. Right? Put the words, put whatever the idea is out, and that's gonna, you know, just open up the pipeline for better ideas to flow. My my inspiration comes from the generation before me in terms of just like, you know, I take my parents' life. You know, there's a lot to get from there. I take my sister's life. I take, you know, just people around me. My family is one of my biggest inspirations. And if something like family inspires you, you'll never run out of things, right? When I'm creating any song, when I'm in the studio recording any song, my nephews, they're always around me. They're six years old, seven year old, you know, and my nieces, they're always around me. And, you know, they're running around such and such. And when it's time for me to record, they're quiet. When it's time for me to listen, they're singing along. And so it all goes with, with, with just like negative and, you know, positive. For every negative thought that you have, you have to counteract that with, with a positive one, unless you're going to get eaten. You know, the, cre- the inspiration will die. Creativity will die. You know, you have to. So... That's what I think about that. That's a really good point, Norman. I think this is great bringing this balance back when you have this negative thought to create a positive thought for it, or at least the minimum coming up with a neutral thought so that you kind of take the energy away from this negative thought. Mm. And you scratch the surface already from how you are creative and I love your idea to going to a new place. This is what I do very often to get this new inspiration. I mean, at these times now it's tough, but it's true. So to get this new impulses and I think with creativity, it's like similar with like with money, because when you don't need money, it like it comes from all sides, but When you are in desperate need for money, it's hiding. So there is no way to get it. It's like staying away from you. And I think it's with creativity and ideas kind of the same, because when you need to have an idea, it won't come. But when you are in a relaxed state, like you are on vacation or in a Mm -hmm. spa or swimming or taking a shower or whatever, so your mind is not that stuck. This is where you're letting go. That's where you're letting go and you don't even realize. You're, you're right. And I think this is in the time when these big ideas come. So you can't go hunting them. So it's better mm-hmm. when they chase you, I would say. Also with money, it's better when money is chasing you, right? Yeah, but it's just like, if you think of the best idea, it's a, if you try to think of the best idea, it's not going to come if you try. It's basically what you said. And it, and to go back to what I said about, you know, change your around and see something different, taste something different, you know, listen to something different, use your senses and do the things that you wouldn't normally do. You know, yesterday I had, um, so I had an idea with a friend. I said, you know, you order something for me, I order something for you, I'll Uber it to you, I'll Uber eats it to you, you Uber eats it to me. So none of us had any idea of what the, you know what I mean? The next person is gonna be eaten. And so I completely trusted uh, my, um, <laughs> I completely put my taste bud in, buds in the hands of a friend, you know? And I loved everything. It must have been like $60 worth of just like full choice um, Asian cuisine. And I loved everything. And I'm just, I'm just heightened. My brain is stimulated. I'm like, this is food that I never knew I had around me. You know, and that, that's inspiration. That's inspiration for a song. That's inspiration for to paint. That's inspiration for anything. That Inspiration is just, it's literally... 
positive energy manifesting in the way you choose to express, right? Wonderful just, said. Yeah, that's literally what in, inspiration is. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. And creativity. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and creativity. That's just that's just what it is. I felt um, a rush to my brain. This is good food. Now I have energy to want to go create. No matter what, come, I'm going to love it. I created it. You know? I'm going to love it. And you can only put it out in the world and hope they love it, but it doesn't change that you do. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yes, it's this positive state of mind. And I think it's always best to start a new project, whatever it is, or an idea with a positive state of mind instead of being negative because you don't bring good vibrations and good energy to the whole process then. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when I, when I, um, not when I first started music, but just, I was finding my way as a writer and, um, you know, not a singer. I always sing. I, I was, I was always a vocalist, but wasn't always a writer. But when I was finding my way as that, a lot of sad things were coming. It was just finding its way. And I didn't mind that because that's what my life was. That's all I was able to see. That's all I could see. And sometimes I still do. But now I find myself wanting to see more, you know? But when I was writing those sad songs, sadness just breeds more sadness. And if that's true for sadness, is you know, is that if that's the true for darkness it's the true it's the same thing for you know the light but as i was writing these sad and you know real songs and i still write them because i'm still there in my life when i was writing them it didn't but i've not what i noticed was that it didn't um it didn't help in terms of like making me better You know, it only made me want to write more sad songs and dive more into sad feelings. <laughs> you know, it made me want to want to do that. Over time, I realized that, damn, it is helping in that time. It was just breathing, breathing more. It was just you know, creating more and more and more and more. And I was just like, it turned out, like it threw me into a depression and I was just, you know, sleeping throughout the whole day. And, and so I realized that had, that, that had to change. Yes. It had to change. It had to change. And, you know, I started writing more about love and different forms of love and, you know, and just, I started writing about just feelings. If I feel sad, like, you know, it's, we're humans, we feel sad, we feel happy. I'm not saying I'm not going to write about the sad stuff because, you know, the sad stuff is real, but you have to balance it out. I was never balancing it out. I was just always writing sad songs. It, it um, felt better to write about, um, you know, uh, it almost, yeah, it was almost like it was just promoting, <laughs> it was promoting depression. I hear it and that my own songs would make me feel bad <laughs> that's you know? crazy yeah <laughs> my own songs would make me feel bad i was like man i really need something to to counteract this because you know and so that's where my writing you know my writing styles um my writing style developed started writing um a lot of afrobeat stuff i i write i write a lot of different music a lot of different music and that's what i can't wait to share with the world that i'm not just um you know It's not just one sided to it, you know, it's just there's a diversity. I'm a, I'm a very diverse artist, very, very diverse artist. I could do dance all I could do reggae. I could do, you know, anything that's asked of me right now. I am creating, you know, what I guess what my what I'm feeling. That's just where I'm at right now. Whenever that changes, it'll, you know, my fans will be the first to know <laughs> when I'm doing something new, you know. 
of course. So you successfully left the downward spiral and you know, you, you always get more of what you focus on. So you changed it up completely and came up with this wonderful song, No Goodbyes, that is your first public debut and will be in the links of the show notes, of course. And also, I saw that you were voted top 20 artists of 2020. So really a lot that you accomplished in the last month. Yeah, it's 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 been a busy it's been a busy month. It's been it took a lot to get there. You know, like I said, we're never really out of all the things that we've been through. It still weighs on me. And, you know, I'm actively trying. That's what's important. Actively trying. You know? That never um, you, you always get good results when you, when you actively try it. I'm actively trying to not be in a dark place. It, it feels, it, it's easy to be, you know, but this month has been very rewarding in terms of all of it. You know, people still need to get to know me as an artist and, you know, those songs that I'm talking about, they're going to, they're going to get to hear all of them. And, um, you know, I'm going to hear about my relationships and they're going to hear about, um, they're going to hear the good about it and the bad about it, the bad, the bad things about it, you know, things that I've done, things that I'm not proud of, all of it, you know, but again, this month has been very, very, um, like I felt like I've, I've, I've harvested, you know, like I've been planting, I've been planting, I've been planting seeds, sowing seeds. And, you know, I don't, not everything, not everything is monetary um, to me. I don't, not that I don't care about money or whatnot, but I care about the foundation of something more. And I feel like my team is, we, we leveled up. We leveled up. You know, we, we have one, one focus. We have one focus right now, and um, I, I think we believe now more than ever that we have something. We have a golden nugget. So, Norman, after all the success you had so far with No Goodbyes, I guess your fans and also the listeners are interested. What are your plans for the future? So, do you have everything else coming up? Yeah, um, I have a few things. I have um, a new single that I'm working on that comes out in you know a month or two, and I have a, a video for that that I'm working on as well. I also have performances coming up. I have a, a TEDx uh, TEDx performance, so um, the date for that would will be made public um, soon. So when I have that, I'll make sure everyone does as well. And I have covers. Everyone has been begging me to do covers and stuff like that. So um, I'm excited to announce that I'll be working on covers. <laughs> and, you know, a lot more performances just depending on what's going on with, you know, with COVID, um, my label, uh, my label, they're working nine to five to to see if we could um, make some of these performances uh, solid. So, yeah, that's... That's what I have going on right now. That's what I have coming up. Awesome. So a lot of good things on the horizon and everything. Yeah. Everyone should check out what Norman is doing. And I suggest the best thing is that you just subscribe to his YouTube channel. So I would say everyone who's listening should definitely listen to No Goodbyes after this interview. And Norman, I have to say it was a real pleasure and great energy today having you on Pure Mind Magic and sharing all the insights about sharing your emotions with the world, coming up with this song, with this idea and building all your success on one idea out of your head and being on your own creative path so i want to thank you for being my guest today and maybe i can bring you back one day to the show um i would love to be back i want to thank you for having me as a guest um i think your conversations are they're very important <laughs>